Hello and welcome. It is the Real Estate 360 show, and this is Steve Connolly, uh, hashtag unemployable. And I am Jason O. Dot Miles, not O apostrophe. It's not O Miles. I'm not Irish. You're not Irish. I know it's a surprise to I'm many. I'm confused. I know it's a surprise <laughs> to many, but there is a common mistake that's made when yes. people hear my name and they, they, uh, they add the uh, apostrophe and not the dot that's as just it is weird. a middle initial. That's just really weird. Well, I mean, if you just hear it, Jason O Miles, it just sounds like, you know, O so, Malley. You know, we o have Riley. We have an interesting <laughs> and informative and entertaining and fantastic show for you folks today. That we do. But first, let me just say, I really enjoy all of the engagement that we've been getting, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, people are coming out. People are reaching out. And I want to encourage you guys to continue to do that, you know? So thank you. Thank you so very much for doing so. Uh, and keep doing it. You know, iTunes. Go to the uh, iTunes, Spotify, um, Google Play, you know, listen to the podcast, subscribe, comment, engage, go to YouTube, go to the website, you know, realestate360show.com, YouTube, realestate360show, and and continue to watch and engage and share. So thank you for doing it, and uh, please continue. We really appreciate it. I'm really going to need your help today, uh, Miles. I- I'm seeing you, Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing you, Murphy. Man, I'll tell you what, it was... Uh... It was a rough night last night, man. You know what, what, what happened? I was playing a gig, you know, until I guess it was one o'clock, you know, and you know, you know, the bartenders are really nice. Well, me, at least you, know? you made it here, you know. Yeah, you made it. Yeah, and I'm appreciative of that. Thank and then you. I and then Thank I had you. to meet some new groupies, you know, and <laughs> before you know it, it's three o'clock, you know, in the morning, yeah. and I had to get up. I was standing at, I don't know, I think it was a Radisson or something. But they're gonna get. Somebody's gonna get a bill. You're, you're, you're gonna need. A, you're gonna. You're gonna need a new manager. You got to step it up a, a little bit yeah. when you're on the road. You know, you need to. And stuff goes wrong. You know, when you're doing that. You know, like I had a guitar string break. You know. Well, Murphy, I got to tell you. Yeah. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know what I mean? I tell you, you know, you're right, and you know, I'm a I'm a big uh, SG1 fan. I don't know SG1. Stargate. Oh, that's right, Stargate. <laughs> You know, Colonel Jack O'Neill. Colonel Jack O'Neill, my cousin. Mm, let me Is just sal- salute. Neil? I don't know. Neil? No, it's got, he's got really an apostrophe. Okay, there. he's Irish for real. Well, yeah, the character is. <laughs> so he says, look, what's your plan? What's your plan B? You know, who cares about plan A? Because plan B, if you don't have a plan B, you don't have a plan. Right. And, and I, th- you know, I think we have found that to be the case. In, some, in, in a lot of ways. real estate. Well, you know, I got to tell you, you know, when we talk about if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. It is what it is. You know, we have a, it, you you can do everything in your power to kind of plan for things. You know, when we're buying hot properties to fix and flip, you know, we want to get in and out in three months or six months or something like that. But it doesn't always happen that way. You know, we're doing a project right now. That it took a while to get funded, it took a while to get permitted, so much time that we actually had to refinance it, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It took a long time. Welcome to the West End. You got to love historic <laughs> areas, right? <laughs> historic right. areas. It was a toughie. But as soon as we get everything ready to go, we have our timelines down, everything's ready to go. The only thing we have to do is get in there, put in the silt fences, and start, you know, breaking the ground to do the foundation. It starts to rain. The only thing we got done thus far is the silt fence we're already a week behind and we haven't even started yet and it's all due to weather so if it can go wrong it will now you can't get all frustrated and angry you kind of got to go with it and see where you can maybe pick up a little more time you know or save a little more time or or whatever it is you need to do but in your planning just like we do with our budgets we add that you know eight to ten percent contingency yeah we have to do the same thing You know, with our timeline, because we don't know when it's going to rain. What happens if we get another one of those snow or ice storms that shuts everything down for, you know, a week or a couple days, a few days? Because it can happen. Well, you know, break out the cards and the pennies is all I can say. (laughs) Hey, you got (laughs) to plan for it. And and a lot of times it can really blow your budget. Okay. Well, listen, we you mentioned that to me just earlier, and that's the first I'd heard of it. Yeah. But could you move your crews inside? No, no, this is an addition. 
Oh. Yeah, this is an addition. So oh, if it was just oh. a if it was just a standard kind of, you know, rental, then absolutely one hundred percent. But you know, when you've got the addition, you got a you got a big hole in the wall and you gotta lay that foundation, they can't do it. There's nothing for them to do. I, can I relate another story similar to that? Please do. I mean, Please you know, do, Murph. Thank you. You know, I don't want to be Murph, but <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. You know. So we're doing this renovation, single family, and uh, this is one that I'm kind of in, you know, heading up. Yeah. You know, you and I kind of swap off back and forth. Yeah. So we we take it on and we go get the permits and we get a contractor, get the permits get all that done, and then, of course, we go through that process, and they say, well, no, you need to do this, and back and forth. So that took, you know, a couple months. Right. And then, bam, we get the we get the permits finally, and uh, we give the contractor the first check. He goes in and knocks it out. I mean, he just he's like a machine. Yeah. And so three or four days later, he's saying, okay, I'm ready for my next draw, you know. Ten thousand dollars or twelve, fifteen, right? Whatever you can get, you know, right? And so we submit for the draw, and so the con- the the lending company says, well, you know, and this is one that we took over, so we're we're the new guys there, but they've had there's history, mm-hmm. so they said, well, because this house had so much in structural issues, we need to approve the contract. Mm. So you know that. So now we're sitting on our hands waiting right. for the contractor to be approved. Oh, and then you're paying interest all along the way. Yeah, of course, you know, they don't care. As a matter of fact, that's kind of a bonus for them. Yeah. You know, like, oh, well, look, you know, we're no hurry. You're paying interest on our money no matter what. But we're saying, hey, we're paying interest on, on this money no matter what. So yeah. hurry up, you know. <laughs> and uh, we, got, we got all the contractor information in there last Friday. And, uh, so I'm following up on it. Hey, can we get an inspection for, for a draw? And I'm pointing out, look, guys, you know, the previous people had a, a quote unquote contractor that actually wasn't a contractor. He wasn't licensed. He didn't, he, the work was, you know, if there's substandard, mm-hmm. there's gotta be like five or six, 10 levels below that. Yeah, that for sure. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> for sure. That's where you have to not only fix it but you really have to just tear it down and start over Mm -hmm. so he's like a negative 10 (laughs) you know those those guys were and so we come in and do it right you know and um and so now we're but but it doesn't matter you know so that's the murphy's law i mean it goes coming in yeah it it's rough it's because you they're unexpected things and you have to be prepared for and a lot of new uh investors you know people that are just coming in you know they went to the great seminar and Right. You know, they, whatever the case, but they're new. This mm-hmm. might be, you know, their first project, or even even their third project. But especially if it's their first and they start to encounter all these issues, because there's always issues. It's, it's, it's how you handle them, you know. It really is. And it's what you've learned to get to that point. Because if you've taken a course or, if, you know, whatever the case, if you've got a little bit of background, you part of that education should be dealing with, these kinds of issues, dealing with the unexpected, because it it's be. going to happen. It should, but it's not always that way. I've never seen a seminar talk about things that go wrong. Well, it's kind of hard to charge people $30,000 <laughs> to hear about what's going to go wrong. I mean, it looks so easy. <laughs> Listen, with some, of the, with some of the investments that we do, you know, the first 10 pages are all, all it is is about how you can lose your money. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I know. It, it, because, you know, you want people to know that there are things that can go wrong. Doesn't mean it will, but here's a list of all the things that could possibly happen. So be prepared for that. And it's very difficult to work with a lot of the new, new investors because they are so unprepared yeah. for the unexpected. But it's going to happen. And something is going to happen because something always happens. The biggest challenge with the new investors is they just don't understand. They, they've been to the seminar. And they're expecting things to go smoothly and quickly and easily. Right. They've seen the TV shows. Yeah, you know? those are great. No one ever has a problem there. Well, they usually do. they <laughs> got to throw in a little drama in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it's usually like, oh, look, there's a piece of wood that we need to replace that we weren't counting on. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You yeah. know, it's not like. That's the easy one. Yeah. It's not like a big deal, you yeah. know. 
Uh, it's when you tear the house up and you you start doing your demo and you know you got to do all the sheetrock, but you're pulling up all the old floors and you see that the band around the foundation has been rotted oh yeah. away. Right. And under normal circumstances, you're not going to really be able to see that. Mm. Right? So that is, I mean, that could be a six seven thousand dollar fix yeah it could be you know and could take a couple weeks to do and if you know you're not prepared for it okay now we're two weeks behind and we're six thousand dollars or five thousand dollars over budget and it could you take know. longer if it rains oh, oh. <laughs> you know and here and here and here we are you know it's beautiful atlanta it's a time time to rain yeah we get a couple of those seasons we get a couple of those uh times in a couple different seasons so it is we have to be prepared for it we have to know what's coming in and it's not just preparation on the front end it's preparation on the back end as well for when you need to sell your property. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit after the break. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla espanol, llámanos, call us today. All right, we are back. We are back to the Real Estate 360 show. And guys, ladies, people, folks, you know, uh, I've got to introduce you to Murph. I have not done that. Uh, Murph is here. Murphy is the epitome of what can go wrong. And if you're listening to this, you must, you must, I absolutely insist that you go to the YouTube channel and see what we're dealing with. Murphy is here. Murphy is amongst us. Uh, listen, I might have to resemble that remark, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, because I, I don't know if I want to be Murph. No, no one wants to be Murph, but no. somebody's got to be Murph. There's yeah. always a Murph. What do you, okay. The so, chicken little, the chicken little of the crew. So what is, so what are people going to see when they go over to the YouTube you gotta, channel? I'm telling you, you, you just have to witness it for yourself. There is no way. There is absolutely no way to describe the mm. vision that is before me. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept that. You guys got whatever, see it. you know. You got to see it. <laughs> you got to see it. I mean, we're all, you know, we're it's like 80s. It's like late 80s rocker right here. You got to go see it. You, you know, the lady it. out in the lobby said, you know, you look like every guy that I went to school with in, in the 70s, in <laughs> high school. I said, yeah, man. I mean, it's kind of cool. like the, it's the mullet kind of thing. It is kind of the mullet I mean? thing, but it's not. It's look. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give everybody a little hint. It's it's the uh, the rock star look. The, that's what I see. I see the rock star. Of the, course, they wore mullets back then. Yeah, and things went wrong with rock star. Did you <laughs> ever notice time. that? All the time. <laughs> all the time. You know, if it can go wrong, it will. You know, we were talking about the ills of real estate. What can go wrong when you're getting involved on the front end of your deal when things just kind of happen. May I give you a technological example of I, that? I'd love it. It's, you know, everybody has copiers and printers and stuff these days, right? So mine, I had my, I had mine and it was giving me a hard time. It was paper jam was getting in it all the time and it just kept jamming up. <laughs> and, I, and I'm thinking, I don't want to buy another one of these things, you know? Uh, so I, I actually contacted the maker right, and right. found the service guy for this. I took it over there and I, you know, I said, Hey, this thing's every time, you know, I do the, it, it's got a paper jam. Right. So he looks at it, you know, and he says, yeah, okay. I, I, I think I understand it. I think I understand what's going on here. And he says, he looks at me and I'm, I'm not a technician. Although I think I was there for a moment. <laughs> Because he said, you know what's causing this paper jam, right? What was it? Well, you know, I had to stop and think because I'm thinking, well, what what mechanical part could it be? And I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe it's simpler than that. I said, well, yeah, I know what's causing this paper jam. The paper is That's causing right. the paper jam. Right. Duh. So what did you have to do to fix the problem? <laughs> I don't think he had a solution. <laughs> <laughs> the paper, the thinner paper? Yeah. <laughs> He said, get a better paper, yeah. you know, because I was machine. buying the cheapest, you know. Yeah. But still, you know, those machines should work on the cheapest paper. Because one buy. would think that paper was paper, right? You'd think that to be the case, but it's not always the case. Yeah. It's just not. There's a difference. There is. 
Those but that's another good. example of, you know, Murphy's Law. It is. I and think. It's going to go wrong. Yeah. It is. It's just going to go wrong across the board. And you have to be prepared for it. You can't, you can't just fall apart when something goes bad. You know, it's, it's now it's time for you to spring into action and start to find solutions because that's what all of us do. And it doesn't matter what our career path is. It doesn't matter what we do for a living. We're solving someone's problem, right? You know, I, I was listening to something the other day, and uh, the, this person said, I think it was on television, said there is nothing that is bad that doesn't come with something that's equally greater good, equally mm-hmm. or a greater good. Mm-hmm. That sounds like Napoleon Hill to me. I mean, it's the truth. Yeah. You so know. that's what we're doing. Yeah. We don't look at problems like they're problems. They're saying, okay, what's really great about this? So tell me, what's really great about being a week behind over there on Donnelly? <laughs> what's, great, <laughs> what is, what's great about it is that no one has to, you know, muck through the mud. You know, nobody's going to make a big mess. No foundation is going to go in on shaky ground, you know. So, so, there is some so you stuff. really hadn't found the good yet. I haven't so. found the good yet. <laughs> so, Just kind of but it's coming. stuff out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good try, <laughs> but let's see. Let's get real. But, you know, it happens on the other side of the equation as well. Yeah. You know, when it's time to sell the house, once you've completed the renovation. You know, everything is good, it's clean, it smells good. Mm-hmm. It's time to put it on the market. Yeah. But depending on how long it took you to get there, market conditions could have changed. You could be in the slow time. Could that be a belief? I mean, it's, it's, there are. I mean, there's an overwhelming amount of facts. Right. But I have found that it's only, it usually takes just one buyer. Yeah, it's always just the one. To buy a house. It's always just I mean, the there's one. not going to be two yeah, that yeah. are actually buying the house. There's it comes down to the one buyer. It does. It's always down to the one buyer. And we always want, you know, five, you know, bidding on it. But in reality, it's usually one or two. And sometimes, depending on the season, yeah, it could take a while to get that buyer. But the point is it's one person. It is one. And so during this, the off season, there's always going to be one person. So let me give, let me put out. it in perspective. There always is that. Yeah. But uh, you list a house today. It's Thursday. Yeah. Right. Not technically, but you list it today. Oh, okay. In this example. In this example, right? <laughs> you list a house today. Yeah. You're planning to have all these showings on Friday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. But guess what happens? It rains. Oh, it's pouring down rain. <laughs> pouring down rain. You had all these appointments booked. Maybe ten percent of them show up. Yeah. Maybe, but they came, but not all the people were able to come or, and I've seen this happen. People will list on a holiday weekend. Yeah. And you're not going to get anything happening. You know, nothing's really going to happen. A couple people are going to come and check it out, but the vast majority of people are going to be enjoying whatever it is they do on that holiday. And then next weekend, you know, now your, your properties have been on the market for, you know, eight, nine, 10 days and sometimes a little longer. Mm-hmm. And then the vultures begin to well, hover over the property. Yeah, you know, yeah. but you got to be prepared for these things. You have to prepare yourself for that. If you know that you're going to come into a slow season, depending on where the property is, because that that's a big factor as well. Um, you have to be able to work with your agent, understand your pricing profile, and Put that thing out there at, right. at, a, at, a, at a competitive price to get, hopefully, a bidding war going, or at least the one buyer, the one person that's been interested in moving to that particular area but, and possibly into that particular house. Right. You have to plan for that because of when you finish. You know, sometimes you get right to the edge. You know, you want to, you know, you're, you're, you're planning when you buy it for it to be done in the end, at the end of the summer. So that you can take advantage of the, you know, the market right before people go to school, children go to school. But it doesn't always work out because, you know, a month goes by because you had this hold up here and there. So it doesn't come out in August. It comes out in September. And it's generally pretty slow because people are, you know, getting their, you know, the children are in school. There's less buyers on the market because they want to buy before the children go to school unless they have to sell. Maybe they're selling their house. You know, there's all these different caveats, right? But 
it slows down quite a bit. And then it really slows down when we get into November. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> no one wants to hear it. <laughs> no one wants to hear it. But it's important that we plan for those things. Because it's not like houses aren't for sale at that time of the year. No, that's true. They're, you know? they're still for sale. Absolutely. There's always some houses for sale. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so and there's, and there's obviously closings that occur. Yeah. It's just being able to attract that buyer and working with people that absolutely know how to make that happen. Right, you know what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. and and we're gonna have our Are buddy we? Sammy coming up, uh, coming up in the next segment. I mean, we're not near ready to close this one. I mean, I want to hear more from Murph about, excuse me, about some of the things that you have had to encounter in your investment practice over the over the past. Let's just go over the past three years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or unless there's something that you just like, there's that one thing that stands out and you're like, I will never forget this. There's so much pain associated with this memory. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know if we should talk about it, but, uh, you know, we've got, uh, th there's one going on, you know, right now where we have a, a guy that's kind of moved into one of our places and mm. it's very difficult to get out. Oh my goodness. I mean, you, you can't plan for that. No. Um, you, you can't now, plan for that. Now we we're having to um actually kind of leave him alone for a minute until we you know do some other stuff cuz we got other priorities but I've already sent my guy over there with a dump truck to just take everything out of the house and yeah. load it up. Now he didn't do that. I'm not sure why. You know, and it's amazing cuz here here we have a house that we're we're going to renovate but we we're coming yeah. around to it. Right. And some guy, a squatter just moves into the house. Gets power and water from the next door neighbor who happens to be a relative, you know. Right. <laughs> and he's just hanging out there. And then, so we have another investor that's calling us from across the street and telling us, hey, this is what's occurring. And his in his bathroom is a five-gallon bucket. That's right. That winds up in the backyard. Oh, uh, it's, you know. it's just nasty. So code enforcement goes over there, and this guy's been dumping all the kinds of stuff. Environmental department of the whatever county. Absolutely. And, like and long story short, you know, there's only so much they can do. We've called the police. The police go over there. The guy runs out the back of the house. We board up the house. He takes the boards off. You yeah, know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Put no trespassing signs up there. Call Put the police. All of it. Done it. Done it all. And they've been out there with their guns drawn, you know, walking in the house. And you we're know. the only ones that get fined. I know. What, what know, is that about? We're, we're paying $300 a clip to try to get this guy out of there, you know, and you can't possibly plan for that stuff. I got to say one thing about the. What we just did, and we got to be really careful because you know how the universe works. We're talking about Murphy stuff today. Yes, and just putting that energy out there causes the universe to kind of reflect back and give us more of that. And we don't want any more. No, we don't. We enjoy. And so the next two segments, let's see what we can do about talking about the positives. <laughs> you know, and and you know, knowing that we have. All good coming from what is a negative situation. And we've got yeah. Sammy coming up right after the break. We sure do. And here's a break. Do you need to sell your house? Well, our company will buy. We'll buy your house. We make the process very fast, very easy, and it's all cash. All you have to do is give us a call today. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833-WILL-BUY. Se habla español, llámanos, call us today. All right, and we are back. We are back to the Real Estate 360 show. And today we're talking about Murphy's Law in real estate. And with us now, here, present, is Mr. Mr. Sammy <laughs> Hadid. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I got some groupies Good outside. Afternoon. All right. Murph. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Murph. Have you met Murph? Murph. I was hey. at the rock hey, show man. last night. Yeah. Oh, do you? How'd you like it, man? It was fantastic. <laughs> Making that guitar sing, baby. Yeah, I'm sorry Woo. about I'm sorry about that alcohol spray all over the crowd there. I hope you don't weren't too close. You know, to the I haven't even row. showered yet. Man. Man. Really yeah. And touched. what's what's the beverage of of uh to spray of choice? Well, I don't know, but I'm drinking Harvey Wallbangers, you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, you, you know, they're, they're a little sweet, but they go down easy. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, so savvy. <clears throat> 
You, sir, are an expert in the field of exit strategies as it relates to how we need to sell our properties, right? I would say I'm very good at it. You know, expert, <laughs> uh, there's always room to learn, of course, well, right? of course, of course. Of no, course. no one is ever at the top right. like that. I mean, there's always a learning curve. Always I mean, there's learning always, curve. always something to learn. But, you know, you, in, in my opinion, have uh, proven yourself to be someone who can you know, get the job done and has a very unique uh, method uh, in doing so. And, and having worked with a bunch of other people over the years, you know, the, the strategy that I've seen you uh, be able to implement to get things done has been pretty good, pretty solid. I appreciate that, Miles, a lot. Now, when you're working with clients at any given time, whether they're buying or selling, and I know you're mo mainly a seller's agent, correct? Uh, yes, I am, mostly a listing agent. Do you prepare them in any way of what they need to look forward to and how they need to do? I mean, how do you do that? What is your, what is your process? Well, my biggest process is uh, knowledge up front, right? You sit down with the people, you tell them exactly what a buyer is going to see a neutral from a neutral perspective, because mm -hmm. there tends to be people that are in love with their property and they have every right to be. It's a beautiful home, but uh, the buyers don't have the same memories as the sellers do in that property, obviously. Correct. That's right. So when it comes to situations like that, particularly you were mentioning this time of year, you have to mention the time of year that things tend to slow down. And um, at this particular point in time, if you genuinely need to get it sold, you might have to offer a little more value to uh, to buyers in order to move the property mm -hmm. right now. And is that value always in a reduced price, or are there are other ways to have the perception of value? Oh, that value is always in the price tag. I mean, <laughs> I, I've seen realtors offer vacation packages to the realtor who brings a buyer or a $5,000 bonus. and. How about the car? Do you remember when they were doing the cars? You know, you buy this house, you get a... A two-year lease yeah. on a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, all that will not negate the fact that if the buyer doesn't feel like they're getting a value, then um, it's not going to matter. Right. It's not going to matter. Not at all. Okay. So, Murph. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. No. I was dozing off here. <laughs> now, we've been in some situations. Yes. We've, we've been in some situations. And we always find a way out, right? Sometimes it's it's a very creative way out. Sometimes it's a painful way out. Do you have anything to add, Murph, to what to do when you know you need to sell a thing? Like, for instance, yes, we have a property uh, in the West End that we know we're not going to renovate. Right. We know we're not going to rent it out. We just want to sell it. Yes. And it gets to a point where it's not even about making money. It's about clearing up that particular amount of money to go get new things, fresh things, you know, get that like car dealers, you know, if they've got a car on the lot for, I don't know, what is it? 45 or 60 days. Right. You know, they're, they're, they're taking it to the auction. They're doing dealer swaps to have new and fresh inventory. And I know we've done that. A couple times just to get it off the books. I think cars is a great example, and uh, it's just. But the house you're talking about, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, we would sell it at a loss. Why yeah. would we do that? You know, we would actually have to come to the table with money. But that's really no difference than this pickup truck that I bought, and I paid too much for it. Right, and I ended up selling it for I don't know six or seven hundred dollars less than what I paid for it. Yeah. But, you know, I'll buy and sell those just like I'll buy and sell houses. I'm using that as, that as an example Absolutely. just for clarity. Yeah. So I'll take that $3,000 that I ended up with, which represents, you know, some loss there, mm -hmm. and I'll take that and go buy something. I'll do a better job, you know. Right, I'll right. just do a better job of buying <laughs> what I with the next thing, and I'll have to, you know, you got to take your hits when, you, when they come. That's right. right? And That's right. Uh, it's not a big deal. You no. Know, because – the volume that we're doing in that house you're talking about, so what? You That's know, right. If we're if we're buying and selling a bunch of houses and we we make a profit on thirty or forty or fifty of them and we have one that we've lost money on, what difference does it make? We're still in the black. Yeah, but <laughs> now it becomes an integrity thing mm. where we need to clear up any lender debt that we might have on it, tax right. debt, 
you know, anything that's going on there, yeah, that's our that's our obligation. That's right. As investors, you know, we're the, we're the professionals. Here. That's right. So yeah. Well, and when we have investors, that's a very good point. You know, <clears throat> if you have investors that are investing with you, it's better you lose than them, because oh. if they lose, they're never investing with you again. You know, and you got to start all over. You know, building re- relationships with others, but with a with a a, a worse uh, track record, a much worse track record. Here's an example. I had a house that I was going to put into the Airbnb process. Yeah. And this was, you know, six months ago. And so we have the contracts all done. Everything looked good. And uh, just to make this long story short, things didn't work out. Right. But in the meantime, I had already contacted my Airbnb person. I'd already contacted my contractor. My Airbnb person had listed the house on Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Had rented it to five people, mm-hmm. you know, in anticipation of me buying and closing this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, the seller couldn't do it because he had an autistic child and the state was going to come in and help him with a whole bunch of, you know, resources now. Right. right. Unfortunately for him, all that fell through. I oh. had everything lined up. He, you know, he would have walked away with cash in his pocket. And unfortunately, he ended up losing the house. Because it was a time critical thing, you yeah. know, foreclosure. Yeah. And they, they were late. Incredible. One day late and about three hundred thousand dollars short. If it can go a wrong. day and a, more than a dollar. Anyway, so I'm uh, glad you all are mentioning uh, what you're referring to right now in regards to Murphy Murphy's Law. And and that is the big difference between an experienced investor and somebody who is gonna make money in this industry yeah. versus an amateur. And the biggest thing the absolute biggest thing you're referring to taking out the positive and everything, correct? Right. Is thinking bigger, having a, a better mindset in regards to your investments and what's happening, right? I mean, that's what it always comes down to in life and especially with things that are going to cost you money or when you're going to make money is your mindset, right? right? Kind of like what you mentioned. You might lose money on your first deal, right? Probably will. But the knowledge, <laughs> the knowledge that you got from that first deal. It's priceless. Oh, my gosh. Everybody pays for their education. That's right. Can I, I got to say this. You know, <clears throat> we watch these things on television, the infomercials, and we go to the free seminars and we do all this, and we're listening to these gurus tell us, I've never lost money on a deal. I've never lost money. That is an impossibility. Well, no, it's not. You know, I mean, there's no way. Well, if they haven't done any, there they are. There, there. there. I guess then they, you're right. you're then they right. couldn't lose that's any money. That's a good point. That's an excellent point. You yeah. know, but <clears throat> when you have people tell you they haven't lost money on deals, they either haven't done deals or they just got started themselves. Right. You know, because it you're going to make some mistakes, especially when you have a volume business. Let me wrap up that uh, Airbnb thing. Oh yeah. So so the lady that that had put this stuff out, she incurred fees and ex- and expenses from Airbnb right? and her commission, which, you know, my contract says she gets her commission no matter what. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so mm. obviously she had to go withdraw all those things. She, she sent me a bill, for, you know, for 1100 bucks. Wow. And, uh, I paid it. Yeah. And you know what? She said, she was shocked. She said, you know, why did, you know, I, I would, I wasn't expecting any, you know, most people would just walk away from that. I said, look, I, you know, I agreed to it. It's that, this is my job on this side yeah. to make sure we get this done. And uh, she said, well, listen, and, and I said, I'm really not about this. The whole point of this is two mindsets. Mm-hmm. There's the mindset of I'm a short-term thinker or I'm a long-term thinker, mm-hmm. a relationship thinker or a non-relationship thinker. Mm-hmm. So most of the guys that are out there are non-relationship and short-term, you know, investor thinkers. Yep, that's but right. How much money is in my pocket right now? That's right. Well, I mean, there's a reason why there's a, a particular portion of the population, well, let's just say the 10%, that actually do very well and they make money and they live fantastic lives as opposed to the, the masses because it's all about your mindset. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all about your mindset. Whatever situation that you're in, you have to have the belief. You have to have the, the knowledge. You have to know that you're going to do a lot better, even if you're losing money on a deal. I'm going to make it up on the next deal, and right. I'm going to make it up on the next deal, and I am a better person now. I'm going to make it up on the next deal, as opposed to just dwelling on the fact, on the negativity that 
you lost money on this particular deal and I'll mm-hmm. never do it again. This was a stupid idea. Mm-hmm. As opposed to saying, hey, you know, I learned a lot. I took my lumps. There's more money to be had. There's more money to be borrowed. People right. are always going to need housing. So I can do better on the next one. That's exactly right. I mean, we look at business after business, big businesses, that is, uh, and the individuals who started those businesses. Then they'll, they'll tell you, look, I failed a hundred times before I got it right the one time. Right. And even once you get that right, that is just a financial catalyst to make more mistakes to try to get the next one thing that works. When we look at number the, the number two position holder in any industry, you know, they, they've got their niche and they know what their mistakes are. It could have been they got to the table a little late or whatever. The whole point is it's always about getting to what's next, as you mentioned. The people who are not making any mistakes aren't doing anything. That's right. right. That's right. That's they're living right. safe lives. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. right. Yeah. They're, they're enjoying friends reruns on yeah, television. Yeah, that's right. Oh, oh, I love friends. Oh, yeah. A nice, <laughs> a nice comfortable couch and table. I'm golden, right? Yeah. That's right. All right, well, listen, let's talk a little bit well, more. man, pass me the potato chip. <laughs> okay. We'll see you after the break. All right. <laughs> Hi, this is Sammy with Sammy Hadid Real Estate, Keller Williams. Are you looking for a top producing agent who will look out for your best interests, top dollar on the sale of your home, a well-negotiated contract, an efficient closing? Please call me at 305-978-4249. I'm more than happy to set up a consultation. I'll put together a proposal for you to net top dollar for your home, what it is that I'm doing to get all my homes sold. Then you can decide what's best for you. Again, I'll do whatever it takes to get your home sold for top dollar, and I promise you that I will protect your equity with my life. 305-978-4249. Sammy Hadid, H-A-D-I-D. Hello, and welcome back to Real Estate 360 Show. Um, I guess this is Murph. (laughs) Hashtag... So positive, Murph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who I am today, I guess I'm man. Murph. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Too many one. mushrooms last night. Well, no, sure. no, man. No, no. It's, it's Harvey Wallbanger. You, know, you got you to go with the Wallbanger. You know. <laughs> so listen, Sammy. Real quick, we're at the uh, we're at the top of our fourth and final segment of the day. Can you just tell people how to get in contact with you? I want to make sure that we get this. Uh, make sure people know how to get in hold of you a few times over this segment so no one can drop the ball. Absolutely. If you need me, please call me at 305-978-4249. That is my cell number. No, that is 305. Yes, 305. I had a little stint when I lived in Miami for a couple of years, which was great. Uh, Uh, But I am here in Atlanta. I'm local. My office is in Brookhaven, and I sell houses everywhere, anywhere. If you need me, I'll, I'll be there. Again, 305-978-4249 is my cell. Please don't hesitate to call me, and if I don't answer, please leave a message, and I will most certainly get back to you. Within minutes. I would say, yeah, <laughs> minutes, right. Yeah. Some <laughs> amount of minutes. Some of I have a question. Um, how do you feel about um, your seller's <clears throat> equity in their home? My seller's currently... Uh, that's a great question, Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Their equity is, of course, what's most important, and the fact that you protect it is what's most important. But it really all just depends on the motivation of the seller, right? Mm-hmm. So if the seller has the ability to wait it out to a time when they can actually protect their equity more, then I would always encourage that uh, because I, don't, I certainly don't want them to lose money if they don't have to. Mm-hmm. But then you have sellers that are unbelievably motivated and they ask me to do whatever it is I can to get the property sold. And of course I'll always do whatever I can to get the houses sold. So um, it really depends on the seller and their motivation. You know, I do, I really appreciate Sammy um, because the, well, a lot of reasons really, because he goes beyond the call of duty. You know, I, I know I mentioned once before that he was, this was, was not even my house. You know, he was out sweeping the driveway. I mean, what mm-hmm. realtor does that? No realtors. No. Uh, well, you can't even realtor. get them to answer the phone yeah. this time of year. One yeah. realtor <laughs> does that. Yeah, and you answer the phone. And um, But I think the, the, you know, the biggest one is you're also a creative thinker in addition to that. I mean, you're, you're more than just a guy that can push a broom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, 
So, you know, come you come, the floor up, with, too. You know, you come up with, you come up with, you're thinking of beyond and out of the box and not everything's going to work, of course. Certainly not but, everything's going to um, work. Truth be told, I've had a, a lot of sellers, which is unfortunate these past few months that desperately need to get their property sold, right? right. Uh, for whatever reason it, it is. And with the current condition of the market, or maybe there's something that is sticking out with the property that's not causing it to sell. I would have to do something very creative to get offers flowing just so I can generate them, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. I, I, I do really hate to see that. But like I said, it all depended on their motivation. They wanted offers. So I had to do whatever I could to generate those offers. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to explain it to you. If uh, I'd love to hear more. Yeah. Okay. So if you're in a bind and you're coming into a slow time and you want to get a property sold for whatever reason it might be, um, you know, it takes a realtor with guts to actually – tell somebody that I will do this for you. And if it doesn't come through, I'll put all this work into it. And if it doesn't come through, that's okay. You know, you don't have to accept anything. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel comfortable. So I had a house sitting on the market for a while and it was a nice renovation. The only problem was there was this giant stone mountain in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a miniature stone mountain, essentially. Mm -hmm. We must've had 60 showings or so because it was a nice area, nice rehab. And did this, it have a chairlift? It didn't have a chairlift, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've been in one of those houses. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! And he wanted it sold. And he wanted it sold so bad. So what I told him is, I've always said that you can price a property at whatever price, and the market will always determine its value. Mm -hmm. What it's worth is what someone's willing to pay. Right. That's right. So what I did was I dropped it to a hundred thousand dollars below the market price where we were at just to generate action, mm -hmm. you know, people coming through and, and people who are knowledgeable that know the area and know its value. And after a weekend, and I'm, and I'm not even joking, you would have thought there was a parade in front of this house. Wow. I mean, cars lined up and down the street. I mean, it was insane. I withheld showings until Saturday for that reason, Saturday and Sunday, just so I could generate all those people. Mm -hmm. First time this has ever happened to me, that Saturday at the open house, somebody walked up to me and handed me a purchase and sale agreement for the property. Mm -hmm. So where we were having no offers and complaints, now we have people who love the property and are handing me offers over my asking price because they know the value of the neighborhood. Well, not only that, but you've cr you created a feeding frenzy by withholding those showings for those two days. You know, there's something that happens when a lot of people get together. That's that this herd mentality. In this particular case, it's the rush. They see that there is momentum. They see that people are into this place. I mean, if you've got, if you show up to a, a house and there's, you know, 15, 20 people, other people there looking at that house and you have any interest at all, you're going to do everything in your power to not waste time and get an offer in. Oh, absolutely. Call each other's eyes out. I want this house, not you. I <laughs> yeah. want it. Right. Yeah. So essentially where before everybody was whining about this rock, during the open houses, people are climbing all over. Their kids are climbing all over it, having a ball. Turned into a feature. Oh, my gosh. All of a sudden, everybody <laughs> loves it. Like, that's the best part of the house, right? Yeah. So, essentially, you just flip the market over on its shell. And where there was no market before, now there is, mm -hmm. right? And just like, uh, just like what I expected, the property got bid up to the price where it was supposed to sell for. That's right. And now we're set to close in a week. You know, right. Where we were on the market for five months before. Um, thank you, sir. I appreciate <laughs> that's it. That's all right. So creative thinking, you know, and, and not, not all agents have the, uh, what are you going to call it? The, the wherewithal. Uh, the wherewithal to do something like that. I was getting vo voice messages asking me, but is that a mistake? Like, oh, did you make an error? And I was like, no, it's not a mistake. Yeah. You know, go, go check it out. Please go look at the house. Yeah. You know? so. That's good. And by the way, you know, we're getting offers that are substantially over our asking price. I'm sure you're saying that, right? <laughs> of course, uh, I, I can tell you this. I can. Well, I had put it at four fifty before it was at five sixty five, and I can tell you we're under contract over five hundred. I'm not going to give you the exact amount right, right. because it hasn't closed, but over five hundred now. Absolutely, so. that's that's. I'm, and I'm sure the seller is very very happy about. He's it. very happy. He wanted it sold. He wanted it sold. He was tired of looking at it, and it's, it's going to be sold. Yeah, for what he wants, for and he was yeah. probably expecting to take a little hit. Oh, or, or maybe not make as much. I don't know. You know, but this is one of those people I was referring to where an enlightened mind, you mm -hmm. know, I've been on the phone with him and he goes, you know, I, I'm going to take a bath on this one. But I've made my investors a lot of money in the past mm -hmm. and they understand that, you know, not not nobody bats a thousand people. Nobody bats a thousand. 
Right. So that's that's solid, man. Unless you up to bat once. That's right. Then you, <laughs> you get a lucky run. that one right, time. Right, right. One time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, kind of like when you play craps for the first that's time. Right. You come out winning all the time. Yeah, yeah. You play that's, another few times. Then that's when it turns into a bad habit. Oh. <laughs> so there's a negative that now is a positive. Oh, absolutely. You know, you turn that rock into uh, a, a super positive. Now people are out there trying to figure out how to build a little chairlift. Oh, yeah. Rock. Oh, the buyer, he's like, oh, I love my privacy. This is fantastic. Yeah, you know? I'm like, true. oh, beautiful. Because yeah, no one buyer. can see past the rock. Oh, nobody. I mean, it goes all the way to the top, man. You know, I can't see it. <laughs> I love it. I, oh, it was great. It's a great know. piece of uh, real estate razzle-dazzle. That's what I've been calling it. For but but you know what? That's what it takes, though, because we know that things are going to happen. And it's the creative mind, you know, the creative thinker, uh, the collective mind, right, mm -hmm. to say, hey, listen, Let's do this. Let's try that and and make it happen. Because sometimes we can be too close to a situation to see our way around it or through it. Speaking of the collective mind, you know, we do have a seminar coming up December 9th in Roswell at the, you know, the fabulous, it's a little exquisite, you know, place called Panera Bread. Our north side uh, office. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the conference room. You know, we've got, we booked the exclusive conference room there. That's right. And, uh. You know, so we're going to do two solid hours. So you're talking about the collective mind. This is going to be a group of people. It's not going to be big because, you know, well, it never it's exclusive. Is. It's a small room. Right. It's intimate. only intimate. intimate. Yes. yes. Like we it. like intimate. to be able to answer questions. You right. know, it's not a seminar seminar. You know, this is giving information, gauging uh, the, the levels of investment in the room, and giving them actionable information, helping them really through their processes, you know. This is this is almost like mentorship in a lot of cases it uh, is. to to a certain degree, and I would tell people that are listening to this right now, based on what we did last last month, right? I would tell you if you are interested in coming, do not waste time. Book your uh, position now because there's or your seat now because there is only twenty seats. We yeah. do that on purpose, but based on what we saw last month, do it now. Don't waste time. This really is almost like, you know, one of those $20,000 seminars that we jam into two hours. Yeah. And then you get the extra benefit of, of, of like-minded people to hang with. Yeah, and, and we're hanging out for Q&A afterwards. We were there for an hour and a half afterwards. No, and for 20, last time, 20 so. bucks. Yeah. Mm. Something's wrong with that. Uh, and and all the croissants you can buy. Go. People should definitely go. They'll come out much more knowledgeable than how do they, they came in. How do they uh, sign up for that? So go to... Uh, the real estate 360 show.com leave out the uh, real estate 360 show.com you know go there uh, there's going to be links that that are up there for the for the event hit it check it out um, sign up for any of the stuff that we do get on our mailing list for the properties because we send these links out to them as well on a consistent basis so make sure you do it listen to us F call Sammy uh, you know iTunes. Google, Spotify, Google Play, you know, check us out. This is Jason Miles with the Real Estate 360 Show. Thanking Sammy Hadid for being here, as well as our great friend Murph. Hey, man, signing off. Thank you for having me. <laughs>